Do you think that across the globe, the average age of the entrepreneur is dropping? Successful entrepreneurs, age is dropping? Is dropping. The average age is dropping because the time to have a business model and the shelf life of business model is shrinking. The reason it is shrinking is that the world has become hyper-connected. Okay? When the world is seamlessly connected, anything good or bad seamlessly flows from one part to another part. The reason the word viral exists today, because the medium has become hyper-connected. Things were not viral before. Which type of virus spreads faster? The one which uses the air, the easiest medium to spread. And which medium is the most inefficient medium to spread if you are a virus? Sorry? I don't understand that question. Which is the hardest medium? You're a virus. You have to spread yourself from person A to person B. What is the hardest medium to transfer yourself? Blood. Blood transfusion, right? It'll be hardest, but malaria makes it easy. Or mosquitoes make it easy. Then what is the hardest? Which one? HIV. Sexual transmission is hardest. Think about it. It's truth. It's truth. Therefore, it is easily curtailed. But an airborne virus is hard to contain. The world is behaving in this manner. In that world, when the things are moving this fast, right, it is impossible for something to last as a secret. Information asymmetry almost does not exist, right? There was a time, let's say I was, I don't know, a big FMCG company, and I would have this policy, and I would have my distributors in different places. Today, all the distributors are on a, can you guess what are they on right now, all of them, on a WhatsApp group. So, an isolated strategy of one state would easily transmit to other states and distributors, and it's not a great strategy anymore. In the past, you could get away with it. Because information would not seamlessly pass from one distributor to another distributor or one state to another state, right? Now, in this world of super hyper-connected world, we are, we are operating with old principles. And, and therefore, the younger entrepreneur is able to do a lot more impact because they understand how the new world operates. The rules are different. At least the distribution is super easy to do if you create innovation, right? The bigger problem we have in India, which I have observed after traveling, after exiting the company, I traveled to at least 12 odd countries to understand the startup ecosystem. The unique thing I found about India is we love to sugarcoat things. We are not very frank with each other. Can anybody answer why are we specialists of sugarcoating? How many of you have traveled abroad? Okay, quite a few of you. At least you see American movies at least, right? You understand they don't sugarcoat necessarily, uh, or you see a TV series, they don't really sugarcoat. They are usually fairly blunt. And uh, we don't like blunt people in India. Why is that? Can anybody answer? Go ahead and just raise your hand. What is the utility value of that? No, what is the utility value of this? Sorry. More? Inclusive society. Okay. That's, a, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Imagine we are in a small village, and uh, there is one shoe guy, one butcher, one milk person, one farmer, and everybody is operating in this world. And if I am the dash guy, then nobody will do business with me or help me or come to help me when there's a problem, so I have to be nice. But what happens one day in that village, one kid who is that 
decides to invent a steel bucket. And he starts selling to everybody. Everybody takes it because otherwise they're using the clay pot, which was breaking every time they would transport water. And he becomes super wealthy. He sells it to other villages, even more wealthy. And now everybody is nice to him again. He was still not nice to them. We are still living in that village world. Because a lot of our world still operates with being nice to each other. It's not true meritocracy that we think we live in. We don't. What I'm, what I'm talking about is the world that we are living in right now. It is not standardized anymore. The disruptors are not coming from your vertical. They're coming from different verticals. What is the disruption that will happen because of a self-driving car? Anybody wants to tell me what will happen because of a self-driving car? Off? OK, that's the easy one. Let's talk about the hard disruptions. What are the other disruptions that will happen because of that? So let's say cab companies will get disrupted also. What else? Insurance companies will get disrupted. Sorry? Let's assume it works properly. Everybody, whenever technology came, everybody thought that it's not going to work properly. When cars came also, that time also people said the same thing. That's why they continue to ride horses. So owning will disappear. What else will happen? Now, just think, uh, no traffic police. OK, what else? Hospitals, why? Less accidents. So let's say if 10% of business came from accidents, it will disappear. OK, what else? Legal system, how? RTO is not required, OK. Sorry? OK. Can you imagine what will be the impact of the hotel industry? Can anybody tell me why? What were you saying? You were saying something. Why? So what will be the new behavior? Perfect. Now, you think the hotel guys are thinking about the disruption right now? They are worried about my competitive brand, kya kar raha hai, uske saamne mujhe kya karna hai, and all that stuff. And there are strategy presentations around that. By the way, the driverless cars are not some sci-fi things in the f future. They are here. And it will not take too long. What, what I'm talking about is that some of these things are real and happening. I'll tell you one interesting thing. The inventor of automated cars told me. There's a guy called Sebastian, who's the guy who invented the Google self-driving car, or the first car of the lot. And he made a very interesting observation. He said that. Uh, when a car meets with an accident in Texas, that information is learned by a cloud, and that information is learned by all the other cars in the US, and by all the other cars that are going to be manufactured in the future. But humans are extremely inefficient in learning. Because we have to go raise a kid and explain the whole thing again. Even if an IMA father gets a kid, he has to still go through the whole process, get the kid to IMA, and hopefully it will reach the same level. But the Google car is learning like this, born with it. And therefore, the world is moving in that direction, and, and we are not prepared for it. In the past, we could parents could tell their kids, don't do what I did, do something else, and that's going to be the future, and that's what most of us did. How many of you are going to get into the same thing that your parents are doing? Please raise your hand. Two, three, four, five. Great. There's a reason, right? 
The reason is that what you're going to choose is going to give you more returns for your effort versus what he picked in the past. You may also say that I don't like what he's doing, but there are more likely chances that you'll pick something that is going to be giving you more return for your time. But what is happening is that some of these things are happening so quickly, right? Uh, how many of you are actively following what's happening in the world of AI? Please raise your hand. One. Okay. How many of you think that your knowledge on AI is six out of 10 and above? Please raise your hand. Okay. Please pay attention to this. It's important. Uh, if you have some time over the weekend, please study all the developments that are happening. There are some easy videos out there to show you uh, how quickly some of the jobs are going to get disrupted uh, and done much better. Um, some of the things that are being developed in cities like Bangalore right now, there's a company which is developing. How many of you have any background on how, let's say, a pathology lab, anybody has a background over here? Anybody family business? You must be knowing, sir, how, uh, let's say, a sperm count is done right now. Can you tell us how the sperm count is done on a, on a microscope? And? And? How are you measuring it? There is a counter. You measure on a unit like this. This is how sperm counts are measured. Today, in 2017, Essay. You watch. Ek, do, teen, char, paan, che, saat, aat, nao, das, zara. Multiply by thousand because the the unit that you measured. This is how it's done, right, sir? Yeah. Oh, there are at least twenty startups disrupting this. Now, okay. Who's the largest employer of India? Who's the second largest employer of India? Army. The largest employer of India is inefficiency. <laughs> what happens when things become efficient? Let's say pathology, one company says, put the slide, tells you a sperm count in microseconds and does 60,000 a day, whether it's happening right now in India, by one startup. 60,000 slides a day. It's a current capacity of it, with better accuracy than humans. At least 50% or more better accuracy in terms of getting to the decimal level right per unit. How many jobs do you think will disappear? A lot. Because you saw the current method. By the way, it's not funny, but this is exactly how it's done in India. Now. The, the problem of this is that the, some of these computers do, are not even like extraordinary crazy stuff. Like an average engineer amongst you would think, is me kya difficult hai? Photo photograph lo, or you know, well, I'm sure 10 of you can make this quickly in this room. But nobody's thinking about it because nobody understood that some inefficiencies existed like this. Imagine I was this guy who was running this great army and. Uh, I have made them such superhumans and like the best things. And I'm, I was winning wars all the time in the past with those people. Somebody just, I don't know, invented nuclear bomb. Like, shit. Because that's how you became a superpower, right? So, applying some of these principles, uh, we, we'll talk briefly about. Delta four. Some of how many of you know about this framework? Okay, four five. Good. Uh, what what goods and services were more efficient ten years ago? What goods and services were more efficient ten years ago? Please raise your hand and answer. Water was more efficient 10 years ago. How? No, water, is, water is still the same. We are more inefficient. <laughs> Actually, we become 
efficient, by the way, with water than what we were before. What else? Public transport was more efficient 10 years ago? No, that's the state. But was the service by itself more efficient 10 years ago? I don't think so. Anybody else? Somebody raise their hand over here. Rivers were more? Cleaner. That's not efficient, right? I'm saying goods and services right now. Let's stick to that. Politics. Was more efficient. <laughs> it is efficient today. You know what? You can make a joke of a particular politician and show them as a humorous character and win elections. It's possible today. It's more efficient today. In fact, the last election was won because of digital. So it was not more efficient 10 years ago. What else? OK, it's, it's just hard. So I'll tell you why it's hard. So now imagine you're, you're a lion or a tiger. What was more efficient for you 10 years ago? Why? No, what was efficient about you? Why were you more efficient about it? Praise the state, the external. Why were you more efficient at it? Perfect. Let's talk about technology. What is the technology of a lion? Nails, which he has to wait for evolution to become more efficient. His body structure or adjustment to the sun or ozone or whatever he has to wait for. So only one species figured out that we will grow faster than evolution. And that's humans. That's why we dominate this planet. Any doubt on us dominating the planet? OK, good. We are the only ones which has this thing where we believe that all the efficient stuff exists in the future and all the inefficient stuff exists in the past. And today is the most efficient state, just not evenly distributed. Would you agree? Let's say, for example, only two labs have taken this sperm count startup's idea. But it is the most efficient state today. And eventually, everybody will get it. And then 10,000 people will do a job in, let's say, Bangalore alone. Now, because we are in this state, everybody who is in the state A to state B, and humans are constantly moving from state A to state B, Everything that is a hurdle between this state is pot of gold. Would you agree to this? Let's give an example. I see close to 50% or more of this classroom is wearing spectacles. Let's say if Ujwal here figures out a way to create a pill that we take overnight, we get rid of our problem. Actually, we get zoom vision. Will he become a billionaire overnight? Inefficient state? Efficient state. Anybody who unlocked and moved humanity from A to B, unlock the pot of gold. How do you know if your idea is going to create wealth or destroy wealth? This is a classic problem that everybody approaches with me. Kunal, my idea is what do you think about it? It's very easy to do it from this lens. It's called efficiency scoring. Let's just efficiency scoring we do for a few ideas, and we will get the thing. It's called old behavior versus new behavior. First is railway ticket booking at a railway platform versus IRCTC. Anybody wants to give me a score out of 10 for both these behaviors from an efficiency perspective? Nine and? Nine and two. Anybody else wants to give me a score? Five and seven. Okay. You're a unique person, my friend. <laughs> I'm very curious to know why. One and four. I'm sure you guys have done this behavior, right? Two and eight. Sorry? Somebody's. 10 old behavior, 1 and 10, OK, all right. OK, if I average out this number, I will find that it's probably in the range of, let's say, 2 and 
and potentially 6. And what you'll observe is anytime the delta is greater than or equal to 4, three things happen. It is an irreversible behavior. Okay? Nobody, how many of you, after going online, went to a railway station saying that this stupid IRCTC is not working in the morning? I'm going to straight to the platform. How many of you did that? One person. <laughs> you must be generally intolerant type of person, huh? It's largely irreversible. Let's, let's say it that way. <laughs> there are exceptions to everything. But it is irreversible. Second thing you'll see is that there is very high tolerance for it. Slow hair, down hair. How many hours was it down for you to go to railway station? OK, wow. <laughs> OK, the third thing you'll see is UBP. It's a word that I keep talking about. It's unique bragworthy proposition. Sorry? No, just, just be careful about what words you use, shifting to internet, okay? Let's say we, somebody moves to state B, which is delta 4. What does he do? He sees somebody doing A behavior. What do you do with them? You tell them, Abe, kya Move to a more efficient behavior. We keep bragging about discovering a new efficient method. And then we scream at everybody over there. And we move all of them over here till this becomes the new inefficient state. So let's say 2 and 6. I'll take another example. Uber slash Ola versus old cabs methods. What is the score out of 10 for both of them? 1 and? 1 and 8? Very good. You are lucky. Just give me a score. It's easier for me. 3 and 7. So let's assume this is also appearing like that. Let's take another example. We used to it become a digital or internet. So this is happening. But let's say where it fails. Mm. Buying shirts offline versus online. Anybody wants to give me a score? Seven and four. Okay, what else? Six and five. Six and four. Five and five. You always come to the mean. <laughs> I'm kidding, dude. I'm just pulling your leg. Just pulling your leg. 7 2. Sorry? 6 2. All right. So, what you'll observe is that it just becomes this and the delta is minus 4. But guess what? How many startups will start in the business of selling shirts online? A lot of it because we think, sirf digital kar do, log aa But this is failing. And this is a classic problem of all startups I have seen. Just make an app of it. <laughs> Making an app of it does not make it more efficient. Let's take another example. This is a slightly more controversial one. Food delivery. Give me a score, again. Or uh, using old methods, calling the restaurant and getting the food versus using apps like Swiggy, Zomato, and others. 10 and 6. 4 and 8. 8 and 5. You, you're seeing this unique thing happening right now? There is somebody who's on 4 and somebody's on minus 4. Let me tell you the attributes of people who are on minus 4. They usually order from two restaurants. And on average, order three dishes. For them, app is extremely inefficient. But people who don't like talking on the phone, 
एंड डीलिंग विद ये एड्रेस ये ये वो छोड़ो दबा दिया मैं क्लासरूम के बीच में ही दबा ऑर्डर कर दिया मैंने दिल फाइंड दैट थिंग बट इफ यू टेक दैट कोहॉट बिहेवियर एंड टेक इट टू लच ए ट्वेंटी मिलियन कस्टमर्स इट स्टार्ट बिकमिंग स्लाइटली नेगेटिव बिकॉज वी आर मोर लाइक टू रेस्टोरेंट सिक्स डिस पीपल वर्सेज दिस आई वॉन्ट ट्राई जैपनीज टूडे नहीं है इंडिया में अब तक so here's what happens when a startup starts they start seeing 10000 customers loving it because they somehow gravitated the guys who are filling delta 4 to use the app and talk about it and they do ubp over here and the company gets funding then they go after another 100000 customers still doing well now they go to 1 million customers and what happens when it's less than 4 it is reversible it is absolutely low tolerance ye kya bakwas app hai seedha phone karo or the third thing nobody brags about it it's not a cool thing to you have discovered anyway so what what you'll observe if you take all of these things and apply to multiple things that you've come across and and it applies to everything as long as you think from a behavior lens a lot of times startups are just created digital kar diya online laga diya internet use kar liya okay when is it hard to disrupt even when you have a delta 4 product can anybody guess for the business people hate change and especially when you are in the old business like imagine a guy who was running the old camp business how much they must have fought and put court cases and all sorts of allegations against the branded companies right one of the things that you will observe is that uh, D- delta 4 is a more of a feeling it's not an empirical fact because it's changing from every person what i feel sometimes when you have taken a lot of effort in the old behavior okay let's talk about uh, our houses right now your mom how many of you have a um made in the house that's been there at least for 5 years and above okay if you ask your mom and say we have to find we have found a delta 4 made now we have to fire this person now why will they not fire them sorry what is comfortable what is comfortable okay trust what else what is trust what is accustomed no you are getting close what is accustomed train what is train no no hold on hold on let's stick to train actually let's stick and let's switch the example quickly before we get lost i have a driver now and i'm not firing that driver even if i find a delta 4 driver who can drive better why he knows my habits okay i have done micro configurations on the driver 100 200 300 of them that if i get a new person the habits will break i'll give you a classic habit that i have every meeting i go to every five star hotel there is a fixed pick up location and fixed drop location and they are different based on the most efficient path sometimes it's hard to get inside a hotel it takes 5 minutes i said mai bahar aa jaunga drop ke liye wahan drop kar dena wo gate se jaldi ja sakta hu there are hundreds of these micro configurations i've done on them to the point that he's become an ai now he calls my assistant and finds out mere din ke meetings kya hai kahan kahan pe hai so when i get inside a cab one find i was on the phone and he drives to the right location i said how did you know that you're not supposed to go to office and go supposed to go supposed to go to trident then he maine swita madam se pooch ke baat kar liya he became smart now it's impossible to fire him and that driver apparently did some bad behavior which i would normally not tolerate but i can't fire that person now another example is english the most efficient language why are we not able to disrupt it why are you not able to disrupt english 
as a way to a way of communication. Network, Network effects, which is every one of us has learned two, three, four, five, six, seven thousand words and the grammar, and all of us are now using that same method. If I have to do a language, I have to start and explaining it to everybody and then hope for it to happen. Not going to happen. Therefore, we are going to continue to use English. If we banned uh, marriages in India of somebody with same language, which will be the national language of this country in 50 years? Let me, let me start again. If we banned marriages, of people between same language, mother tongue, what be the English? It's that easy and it's that hard. What I'm coming to is that there are certain things that even if you create disruption, they're hard to get rid of. I'll give you another example. Why is tally hard to disrupt? Everybody knows tally over here? How many of you? Don't know about tally, I can explain it to you. Don't feel ashamed, it's okay to raise your hand. It's an accounting software that is used by every single accountant in this country. Almost a monopolistic market. Why? The CAs are? What is used to it? Trained on it. Tally did the craziest hack, they started making sure that all the colleges that were teaching accountancy were only teaching it on tally. So I go to a new place and say, we paper ko computerize karna hai. What did I order for? Tally, because that's what I know. Why is it hard to disrupt Microsoft Excel? Even if you make a Delta IV product of better than Excel, because even if I learned it, I will make my own, let's say, XYZ file, I'll mail it to you. Then what do you say? You have to export it to Excel and then sell it. So then, then, and then half the things will not work. So I'll say, Jane do, I use Excel. Use karta hu. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm talking about over here is that how things are getting disrupted and things are getting easy to disrupt because it's easy to spread now. The diffusion of innovation is almost instant. How quickly do you think you get a good joke to you? Normally, let's say a good joke was made somewhere at 9 a.m. on 21st February. Typically by, and how many hours do you get it? Three, four? How many of you think that you get a joke after a week usually? Anybody thinks that way? It doesn't happen. Why? Because it's a great thing to share a good joke. And we spread it like a virus. Uh, and, and we steal the joke of the original guy and put it on our Facebook. <laughs> then what happens? <laughs> Somebody? <laughs> Somebody will start trolling you. Hey, iska uthaya. <laughs> this was never happening before because we could all say the jokes as if we created them. 15, 20 years ago, you could crack jokes without quoting source. This is happening today. Some of the older guys are smiling more because they have done that. You guys don't understand what is <laughs> quoting original sources. Anyways, coming to uh, the point I was making about this, a lot of times startups are done. So there's a longer video of this you can watch online on YouTube and talking about, actually let's talk about when, what, what happens when a company is, let's say both of them are company A and company B are at the same, almost the same delta. What starts happening now? When, when two companies are equally innovation or efficiency scoring point of view, what happens? They'll drop price. Okay, when you drop price, who won? Customers. So when two people compete, the benefits go to customer. Who else does it go to? Yeah. 
suppliers. If you are a monopoly, let's say you are a tally, any supplier you will say, boss, kaam karna hai karo, varna jao. But now, there are two people who are equally competing. You say, I'll not pay you enough. I'll increase my, uh, I'll give you at a 10% margin instead of a 8 that I used to make earlier, and so on and so forth. And they'll make these guys compete. What else happens? Somebody said that. What is that? Talent. A Delta Four talent will start milking these two companies. Amazing, isn't it? That's how you will see the sentiment of placement salaries going up and down. What else? Who else takes the benefit of this? Government. Government. How? Media companies. Whoa. This is the best. Mera bhi full page ad, aapka bhi full page ad, teen full page ad, char full page ad. <laughs> Every time you are in the business of helping other people compete, you'll win. Which are those companies? Free charge used to be in that world. Now we are also in this zone. But we are still OK compared to other people because nobody is going back to the shops to recharge after they have tried these platforms. Between all of us and all the players combined, can, you, can anybody guess what percentage of people are recharging online right now? Between all the players in the wallet slash payments industry? Twenty percent, and the biggest jump during demonetization. It was ten percent before that, and before the ten percent was done, there are unicorns created out of this. Before demonetization, it was ten percent recharging online, but it's an irreversible behavior. You'll understand that. Some of you already do it. How many of you? Recharge or pay bills offline after they have tried online. Anybody raising hands? Chalo, this time I won. It's irreversible. <laughs> okay, so what happens is when you are not a Delta Four, then all of these guys will take your advantage. It's a unique world, right? Uh, but if you again create a Delta Four, which is better than all of these guys, then again, they will start getting customers to them. And it will be disrupted. A lot of times, the companies that are there already are too arrogant to acquire a new innovation. Therefore, they get disrupted. Companies like Google are very smart. What was their biggest acquisition, which became really big for them? YouTube. Which else? Android. Ad-serving platforms. Google Maps. Smart. Use the capital that you have to buy Delta Four companies. How many of you remember we used to tell the guy, Maps, use karo, ye kya phone karte ho, kaan hai, left, right, left, right kar rahe ho? Now, the cabs learned. Now they tell you, sir, location dal do, ye sab kya bakwas baat kar rahe <laughs> How many of you have experienced that? I have experienced that now. Like, kya left, right kar rahe Dal do location, sir. This happened in a very short period of time. So, uh, anyways, what I'm, what I'm coming to is that this is how the world is quickly changing. Today, the tools are available, distribution platforms are available to create innovation and disrupt markets. And uh, keep winning. One exception, which I did not talk about, is how many of you feel Apple is Delta 4 to Android? 
थोड़ा कर ले फेल्ट लाइक टू इट टू थ्री ओके हाउ मनी फील एंड्रॉइड इज डेल्टा फोर टू एंड एपल Is it Delta Four? Please think again and tell me if you can raise your hand again after that. Is it truly Delta Four to Apple, Android? You think it is? Okay. It, it's not, but there is a unique hack that Apple uses. You ask any Android guy right now. iPhone ka deal hai. Shift hoga kya? He'll shift. Why? Can anybody answer that? This is a very easy thing. This is up your alley. Brand. What is brand? What is bragging? Perception of the company. Okay. Okay. Perceived to be richer people. Okay. Interesting. How many behaviors have migrated from poor to rich? How many behaviors that poor people had migrated and became the behavior of the rich? Anybody wants to give me examples? Genes were with poor people and moved and became behavior of rich. How do you know what happened? What time tak log poor log jeans pehn rahe the? फिर क्यों सडनली रच लोगों ने पहन लिया एनीबडी नोज दैट लीवाइस इज दैट हैपन वॉट इज कूल टू वेयर वॉट इज कूल टू वेयर आई टेक वॉट हैपन्स राइट सडनली टू सेलिब्रिटीज विल से पॉस ripped jeans and suddenly all the people are now wearing ripped jeans they try to show you are influential and you do unique behavior and everybody imitates you how many of you believe that we ape ape other people how many of you believe that we ape other people are you you guys don't ape other people really some people did not raise their hands we consciously and subconsciously only ape people the type of ape is different some of you may ape a model some of you may ape steve jobs some of you may ape i don't know your professor or some alum or your dad or somebody how many of you think that you still don't ape anybody please raise your hand okay finally it's hard to get across points guys Anyways, how many of you know the history of potato? Raise your hand, sir. Can you tell me the history of potato? How did it become such a popular vegetable? Okay. Anybody else knows the history of potato? Sorry. not not truly okay perfect actually let, let me make it easy king of persia wanted the volatility of wheat prices and wheat to not be there so he asked the farmers to grow half wheat half potato no vegetable we can't do this so he started punishing farmers killing them for not growing potatoes they would still not grow then he did an amazing thing he said from today onwards potato is the royal vegetable all the royal meals had potato and all uh there was a royal patch that grew the royal potato which was guarded by the royal guard but just not guarded well enough that's the history of potato do you, you go to history of anything history of sugar you'll find the exact same thing how many of you know history of sugar refined sugar that we have today okay interesting 
Did, how many of you know that uh, before sugar was consumed, there used to be statues of sugar which were more expensive than crystals? Okay, nobody knows. Okay. That's the history of sugar, by the way. It was royal. It was so expensive that people don't eat it. It will be a, a statue made out of sugar. It was, sugar cane was not discovered as a great source of uh, doing refined sugar, and it used to be so expensive and considered to be a royal thing. And then it became normal. Therefore, in the past, Halwais were very rich people, like because sugar was royal, and then now sugar is not a big deal. Anyways, what I'm talking about is that's another way of hacking this behavior, that you can make it look like only kings use it. That's what Apple is doing. How do they do that? One, brand positioning and price. They make, it, make sure that it's constantly with rich people. The margin that they make is growing, which that breaks all the principle of all the stuff that, like, whatever we've learned. The cost of making a phone is dropping, and that is growing. This is only possible when you play this game really well and only keep it with the rich. Right? Uh, so that's, that's all from my side. We're going to uh, put it into Q&A mode. Hopefully, I made you rethink a few things and uh, added some value to you guys. Uh, questions? large majority of this country's phones are dual SIMs. And rarely people would have the same operator. Therefore, they like to go to a platform that gives them all the options. Uh, initially, initially, they did not like us much. We were banned by multiple telcos initially. Uh, but as you get consumer traction, you grow. Uh, how many of you have been, how many of you used recharge in the 2010 time? 2010? OK, some of you. Some of you remember the coupons we used to give you and all that stuff. OK, good. When we, uh, certain telcos thought that we were undercutting, and they banned us. But we were giving coupons of some other retailers. They think you are undercutting, and our distributors are complaining. So our consumers would ask us on social media that, hey, uh, why don't you have this operator? And we would tell them, sorry, it's coming, it's coming. And one fine day, we gave up and told the social media that, hey, this particular operator is not giving us the thing. Why don't you tweet to them and email them on this if you want this operator to be live on our platform? And 600 tweets went in one hour to that telco. And then telco called us and said, what are you doing? Put it in, start it. As an entrepreneur, you have to do some things like that, and, and that's what we did. Uh, do they like us? I think it's a love and hate relationship because of the reason of the disruption that has been brought into this space. Uh, nobody thought of this category as even an e-commerce category. Till 2014, nobody even reported recharge as an e-commerce category. And I loved it. Because if I had not loved it, there would be more players and more of this happening. No. You can show a demo. When I started free charge, I showed people a mock screen. I had not even written a single line of code. And I showed it to them. Only when 95% of them said that we will use this absolutely. I did not do efficiency scoring method, because I did not know about this. This is something I realized after selling the company. I used to meet startups and say, Kunal, what do you think is the idea? And I would tell them it's stupid. And, and they would get offended when I tell them it's stupid. 
So I said, let me invent a method to tell them it's stupid. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Uh, so I've created a Delta 4 product, say, and now diffusion is very fast, as you say. So, so what role does marketing play when a startup has created a product? So how does... That's a good, very good question. How many of you use Truecaller? How many of you downloaded Truecaller because you saw a marketing campaign of Truecaller? That's the role of marketing. Either Delta 4 marketing manager Aiga. Sir, I'll help you compete. Media will say, I'll give you a better platform to show your ad. I'll make a nice creative for you, or yeah, ad says we'll kill the competition. All this stuff happens when you have no delta difference. A true caller did not spend a single dollar. They have 100 million daily active users in India. That's the role of marketing in the long run. Sorry, marketing is a loose word. I, I we, we confuse that. This is Del Delta Four is marketing by itself. Sir, I have a question regarding that. Uh, why free charge is not moved from recharging just to the online shopping experience? And hmm. so, so actually, I'll I'll touch upon this two points of this question. Uh, there are transactions that people hate to do, and there are transactions that people love to do. Anybody wants to guess what those two are? Any examples of those and these? Transactions that you hate to do? Bills? Huh? Taxes? Insurance? Booking tickets? Fueling your car? Trying clothes. Paying your building maintenance? So many of these things, right? What are the transactions that we love to do? Shopping. What else? Buying. Holiday booking. So, naturally, we want to spend more time here and less time here. Because we want to spend less time here, this company has to focus on how to make sure that you spend no time over here so that you go more spend time on, I don't know, watch a viral video or shopping or whatever. When you merge these two, it's like trying to open a shopping mall in petrol pump. What happens? Does it work? How many shopping centers have worked in a shop petrol pump? It does not work because people hate being at a petrol pump. That's the long answer to that question. Yeah, I, I, the B2B hack I've only seen is uh, the, the whole king thing, right? So let's say there are two pharma companies, uh, pharma company number 38, pharma company number 4. And I, two people, let's say both of us are selling exact same solution. He manages to sell to number 38 because he's a dost. Hai. And I spend nine months convincing this guy, Mr. Number 4, and he implements my solution. Okay, now, yeah, or, or now let's say I go to gentleman over here who is pharma company number six, whose solution will he buy, mine or his? Why? So he'll say, Are four ko becha isse socha hoga. That's how B2B behavior operates, mostly. It's weird, but it's true. We'll, we'll take one more question. It's a good question. Um, sometimes the delta four is short term because others will catch up and the the effort you took to make it delta four is not dramatic. Actually, let me give you a simple example. Let's say uh, I, I I figure out a method uh, to use some way of doing this which does not make the bottle leak is a delta 4 method then let's say your current way of closing the bottle or let's say tying shoelaces i invent a new method but once it spreads on youtube you learn the new method and never un like it doesn't get out i have not earned from it 
I've just made a delta 4 behavior which I spread to everybody. So not all delta 4 is monetizable. I can just give it on the internet how to break eggs perfectly. Or You've seen those videos. They are, they are huge hits. Like all how-to videos will have 10, 20, 30, 40 million views. Right? Once I do it, it's not valuable anymore, so much monetizable. But when you see that you can protect that delta 4 because you've taken technology effort to build that, it's not for easy for the old guy to learn. Let's say, can shops learn to do online recharge? Can, can, can the local shop outside launch an app for IMA campus? Can my app use to recharge karne ke liye? That's where it's, you can protect it. Other case, you can just lose that delta 4 advantage once you figure it out. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, good fun. Thank you, Kunal. I would now like to request Professor Kanna to deliver the vote of thanks. So maybe I should give this thing first. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, thank you very much, Kunal, for uh, finally making it to the campus. We've been <laughs> trying to get him here uh, for the last six months, and some things just never, uh, we are just not able to schedule it. But uh, thank you very much uh, for spending some time here and uh, getting to the Delta Four theory. We are all expecting that, uh, even in the teaser sent out by the, by the team. And uh, thank you all for coming here, and uh, we hope to see you also for the last session. Um, there's something surprising for you and, and we'll get back to you soon. Thank you very much.